The whole time that Joseph Scriven was in college in Ireland, in Dublin, Ireland, he uh, thought about, constantly thought about his great love that he had left back at home. And he knew that as soon as he graduated from college, he was going to rush back to his home and he was going to marry her. And finally, that day had come. He had graduated from college. So he rushed back to his hometown to meet with his bride to be the love of his life. And they were scheduled to meet. They were going to meet down by the river. Uh, uh, at just the day before their wedding. And the very next day, they were going to get married. And his bride-to-be, she ended up getting there just before him. And as Joseph went and he uh, saw uh, where his bride's horse was, he didn't know exactly where she was. But what he didn't know is that the horse had actually bucked her off and bucked her into the river and her head hit a rock. And there she drowned within the river and died just before he arrived. He described how he could so very clearly see her face through that water and how it haunted him the rest of his days. His heart was broken. Everything in Ireland reminded him of his love. So he left Ireland and he ended up going to Ontario, Canada. And there, while in Canada, he ended up accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior in 1845, and, and he grew in his faith, and he, he, he conducted many Bible studies, and he uh, served people out of the kindness of his heart. He was a giving man, a loving man. Now his love was through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as his, as his love uh, uh, portrayed the very person of Christ, people saw Jesus in him and had great respect for him. There again, he found another woman that he fell in love with, never thinking that he would fall in love again. But just a couple of weeks before he was to be wed to his new love, the young age of 23, she ended up dying of pneumonia, writing a letter back to his mother, telling him the very sad and tragic news, the death of his new love. He had a different heart this time because now through this tragedy, he had a great friend that walked with him through all of the sorrows, all of the trials, all of the temptations that life had to offer. And so Joseph included in this letter to his mother, who was still back in Ireland, a poem that he had written to give him comfort and also give his mother comfort. The poem said, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Joseph lived out the remainder of his days unwed but he lived out the, un, the remainder of his days with his truest friend, his friend, his Lord, his savior, his master, but much more than just a master, his great friend, Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 15, 15, he said, no longer do I call you slaves for the slaves do not, do not know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Isn't it wonderful that we have a friend in Jesus who'll never leave us nor forsake us, who'll be right there with us every single step of the way, no matter what we face, good or bad. He's right there with us. Just before Jesus ascended, he said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. When he was born into this world, the angel said that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. What a friend we have in Jesus. Many years later, a tune was put to that poem, and it was an Irish tune to give honor to the man, Joseph Scriven, the Irishman. And that tune went something like this and I hope it's a blessing to you and I hope your faith and trust is in Jesus 
He'll be your master. He'll be your Lord. But he'll truly be your friend.